Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So, it is the morning after, so you will see that last night <laughs> I had an MGP 2023 slash Fest 2023 party where I invited a couple of friends over. I thought it would be really, really good fun and we had an absolute ball. These were like kind of casual Eurovision fans that kind of watched the show. Um, but because the quality of the songs in both finals was so strong, I thought I'd make a night of it and um, it was great. We had such a good time. We had scorecards, that's the Bebedorm Fest, that's the MGP. And then we had a little fun little tally at the end to work out which was our actual winner. So <laughs> first and foremost, Elephant in the Room. Um, thank you for the three and a half thousand people that actually watched a video that I put on last night about Benidorm Fest. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the people that reached out with to me this morning asking where that video is, yeah, it's not on my channel anymore. It did get taken down. I will be brutally honest with you. There's two key reasons why that happened. Number one, my friends um, were involved in that video. And as a result of that, were open to scrutiny as well and potentially didn't ask for that or didn't expect that. And that was my fault. And number two, three o'clock in the morning, reading comments as they're coming in and trying to process it wasn't particularly great for me either. Now, I'm never going to lie on this channel, what's the point of it? Any reactor can just sit in front of a song and be like, wow, this is amazing, slay to every song. And then you think to yourself, this is just an ego boost channel. It's not a channel where you have an open dialogue about just your opinions. I've never professed to be like a music professor at all. I'm just a huge fan of Eurovision, loved it for so many years, and I'm enjoying my passion of Eurovision through this channel, and I'm enjoying speaking to people. But obviously last night was particularly the first time where a lot of obviously heat got sent towards my channel, rightfully so. Maybe I was one of the few people that didn't post something where I was absolutely going crazy about the winning song. But I must say, um, not all the comments <laughs> were bad. There was actually quite a lot of support and a lot of people saying, you know, I respect your opinion, but I disagree. Um, there were one or two funny comments <laughs> basically saying like my friends were look, look like they were in like a hostage video. <laughs> I think because we'd recorded the MGP video before and Nio at the end said he preferred Norway to Spain. I was like, oh, just be careful what you say about Spain. <laughs> and so before we did the video, I was very much like, right, so it's evident that you prefer Norway. It's evident you didn't have Blanca in your top four. But let's just pick our words carefully. <laughs> and I think as a result, they just were like, <laughs> I think that's also another reason why I was like, oh, is this video even worth it? Like these two people just like lack of freedom of speech. But I think no, like they did give their opinion overall, which I did respect. And I think multiple voices and perspectives is, is important and healthy, I think. So um, yeah, I did take it down and I just took it down because I generally feel that every video that I post on my channel, I do second guess, expecting some heat, but I watch it and then I stand by it. But because I edited that video quite quickly and just put it on my channel and the comments were coming in, I started to panic a little bit because I couldn't guarantee that I could stand by everything. So I have basically decided to cut that in half, um, but ultimately the general gist is still there. So after this, feel free to watch the video that got taken down last night um, due to, um, yeah, a lot of heat. And I, I can take the heat, I can take the heat, but ultimately three things I had to take into account last night. My friends, I've spoken to them this morning, they're more than happy to take the heat. Um, number two, three o'clock in the morning, not being able to cope with the amount of messages of a certain kind. And number three, not being confident and sure that I could stand by that video and be like I don't care what you're writing like I'm absolutely happy with everything that was in the video because it was rushed to get it onto my YouTube channel I couldn't guarantee that so, so with that with said that um a couple of things to to kind of point out from last night I think ultimately it was always going to be a two-horse race between Paloma 
and Agony, with Vico potentially getting in there as a dark horse. So this was our scoreboard. This was the thing that caused so much heat. <laughs> so you can see. So in the end, it was so it was a lot quicker just to do everyone's top four and work out the scores from that. So we had Agony as our first place. Everybody absolutely loved that song. I think coming off the back of Norway and watching Norway, I think people's mindset, and I think that's a factor to take into account in regards to going from MGP to then Benidorm Fest with a completely different feel. Um, Agne, they lapped that up. And Vico, they lapped that up. And then there was a big kind of gulf to the other ones. So Alice Wonder, how good was she last night? She gave me the performance that I missed in the semi-final. Like I emotionally connected that song. And what did I give that one in the end? I gave that one. That was my third place of the night. I just realised my maths is awful because Megara got five. But that still puts them in fourth place. So yeah, we had Blanca in fifth place. Now, my top four. <laughs> my first place was Agony. Uh, my second place was Vico. My third place was Alice Wonder. And my first place was Carmento. Like, from the off, I was watching that and I was like, do you know what? I am totally sold with that. Um, but, um, but nonetheless, yeah, the general feel about Blanca, because as people were leaving, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to do this video. You know, a lot of you, so I'm just looking at their school cards now. Like, it's not like it got bad. I think for ma for majority of people, it was in their fifth place generally. And I asked people to give me their top four. Um, so I was just asking people generally kind of, you know, why... Did you not make it higher? And everyone kind of said the same thing. They said the voice is incredible. The styling is amazing. The, the ideas of the staging are good. But generally, once you get past the first 90 seconds, the song loses momentum. And that was their opinion. They are not music scholars. If you want to kind of, they, I, I wouldn't even say they're a, a sample. Me and six people, they're not a reliable sample. But they do cover Brits, Irish, and Finland, Finland won. So that's it. So it doesn't really kind of, you know, demonstrate a reliable sample. Um, but again, speaking to Spanish people this morning, kind of saying those things, um, I was saying particularly two people said it was very intense. And then basically Spanish people that I spoke to on Instagram this morning, just talking about last night, they were saying flamenco is intense and flamenco isn't for everybody. Um, but nonetheless, it won. Now, a couple of things that I want to say about that is, number one, I do think that this probably was the right choice. Like, Agony for me was my favourite. I really enjoyed it. I think if Spain sent it, it would have done well. I don't think it would have beaten Chanel's performance last year. And I think we also need to take into, my, into account, as people were leaving last night, I asked them, who do you prefer, Agony? or Alessandra from Norway. And exclusively, they said Alessandra. So with that said, I think Agony would have done well, Agony, but I don't think it would have won. And we know Spain are going for the win this year. We know that Spain turned down hosting Eurovision because they said they want to host it when they win. Now, from everything that I could see from YouTube, I watched a multitude of reactions today. What I could see on Twitter and I hope it's not out of fear <laughs> that they're going to say the wrong thing. But ultimately, I think people generally are very excited about it. And it's, it's an unknown quality. It's an unknown quality. I can totally see why people are comparing, comparing it to Jamala, 1944. A song that people don't listen to or didn't really listen to. But on the night, in those three minutes, you get that automatic connection where you just can't forget it. Like, do I listen to 1944 now? now? No. When I watched it live on stage, did it give me chills? And did I say and turn, this could win? Yes. And I think this song does certainly have that kind of element about it. But anytime you send something unique, you have to, you have to realise that it also could, could do the complete opposite. Now, Regardless of the Eurovision result, I still stand by what I said in my video last night, and that is every single Spanish person on Instagram who have professed their love for this song have also said, I do not care how this song does at Eurovision. 
I am just so proud that this song is representing us. Chico Toxico, he said something very, very similar. It, it doesn't matter about Eurovision. What mattered last night was Spain getting behind a song that they are so unbelievably proud because even Chanel last year, going into Eurovision, there were still pockets in Spain that still didn't fully support that song. And it was only till she did well at Eurovision that suddenly out of the woodworks, all of these people that were haters suddenly started saying how amazing it was and how proud they are of her, et cetera, et cetera. But this seems to have a pan-Spanish support from what I could see. So that's always a huge positive at Eurovision when you know you're like, pretty much a whole country is behind you. Where Chanel was going into Eurovision with so much toxicity when she went through that Belladorn Fest period. So yeah, at least Blanca is basically going into Eurovision on a much more positive note. I think also what's quite interesting just going through Twitter is generally people are just super, 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 super happy that Spain is sending something different. I mean, what? Yeah, that's the Spain I want. A Spain that takes risks and isn't afraid to show its culture to Europe. The fact that I love the performance, even though it was clearly not my fave song, that's me. I loved the performance. And in fact, you know, there are three reactors that I think have a good take on this. It, and they come on different spectrums. So Nush, watch Nush if you just want to see someone get super excited about a song that they love. That's Nush. If you want to actually watch a YouTuber that dissects the songs and its musicality because they have the experience and the qualifications to do that, the piece around when she reacted to all of the finalists, she called Blanca song, she called it, it was the best one musically. And then there's Tom, T-M-L-W-R-N-C. They pretty much summed up kind of how I feel and how some people feel. It, it's not their favorite studio version. It's not the song out of all of them that they listen to on the reg. But when you watch the performance, you cannot not be wowed by it. So I stand by my reaction to the semi-final 100%. So, I mean, this one's got a swear word in. <laughs> I am so bleep happy that Spain choose something completely different from what they had in the last years. And I can't wait for to slay. This performance is at the very least top five material. And I think that's the point, that actually Spain is sending something different. And let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. Um, but ultimately, you know, I do think the future of Better Dawn Fest is your Carmentos. It is your Blankers. It is your kind of Megaras. It's quite interesting because I played all of the songs that got knocked out as a kind of warm up um, before MGP started, all the bops, and everyone sat down and they were like, meh. So ultimately, it'd be quite interesting next year to see the tact that Benidorm Fest go in regards to will we have more cultural, traditional songs, songs that sound like they come from mainland Spain over the bops, because the bops did just get annihilated effectively. Um, so yeah, and also can I just say vocals, the vocals were so much better in the final compared to the semi-final, I don't know whether people were more confident or they did something with the sound, I don't know, but I mean, Alice Wonder, vocally on point, and Vico, there were a couple of them that did some tweaks to their staging, I think Vico had more lights at the end, because I remember there was more of a climax light last night, and just everyone around me were absolutely buzzing, like generally, Agony and Vico was the ones that everyone was loving, um, and as a result of that, it was a great, great show, I want to just make that very clear, because from last night's, obviously, video, I think it was people thought that I... I didn't like Benidorm Fest and I didn't like the winner. That's not the case. We all had a great time. We really enjoyed the show. But we've got to realise that sometimes it's okay to say <laughs> that a winning song is not your favourite song. It's okay to say that a song that wins for Spain might not win Eurovision. Like, these things are okay to say and they don't warrant the backlash that I received last night. And this isn't a, a, a boohoo me. Like I said, I stand by anything that is on my channel. And ultimately, I stand by everything I said last night. I just didn't know 100% everything in that video I was confident with. So yeah, so this little shane log is followed by um, the... It's, it's, it's edited, it's edited, but it's it's more edited to kind of keep it more succinct. 
um, of the video that was on last night. Um, but ultimately, I'm really looking forward to the Madrid preview party. So I've got my tickets. No doubt Blanca will be there. She was there last year. I can't wait to see this live. I heard her live last year at Madrid preview party. She is insane live. And moreover, I can't wait to be in a room full of Spanish people just absolutely going crazy for their act. It's something to behold. It's an experience to be in a room full of Spanish Eurovision fans watching their entry. Like, yeah. You can't, there's no words. <laughs> you need to experience it. Um, but it's a total vibe and I totally love it. So yeah, I guess we end our Benidorm Fest 2023 season with this video. And ultimately, Spain have selected a song that they are totally behind, which is what I can see, which is amazing. And I think I'd rather have a scenario where everyone's behind a song rather than what we had last year with like literally a minute after Chanel's win, just complete division. I don't think we've got that this year. So that is good, that is healthy. And yeah, I think it's gonna make Madrid preview party ever more fun. So those are my thoughts. Um, so yeah, um, until next time, stay safe. Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision Rep View channel. So Benidorm Fest final has just happened. I've got two people that were at my MGP <laughs> Benidorm Fest party. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to briefly talk about our experience at Benidorm Fest. So I'm going to start off because my <laughs> my bookends are quite nervous. I've told them when it comes to Spain, <laughs> watch what you say. So I, I said I will start off in regards to just go off my vibe. So when we came to do the actual points, I kind of made an executive decision just to do our top four. So as a result of that, tonight, Spain, do you remember your top three? It was Agony, number three. Mm -hmm. Is it Vico? Vico. Vico was number two. And I think I had Alice Wonder, number one. Okay, nice. Well, you're Irish. It's a ballad. Makes yeah. sense. I uh, I had a top four down here. I had uh, Megara as number four, Alice Wonder, number three. And then it was a close one between one and two, but I had Agony, number two, and Vico, number one. Yeah, see, the general gist in the room was um, we kind of liked Agony and we kind of liked Vico. And the other songs kind of, in fact, actually, I will do a picture of our results. Um, those two were streets ahead of anyone else. But generally, people were saying, you know, Megala, Alice Wonder, Vico and Agony were the ones that people generally gave points to. Noticeably, not really Blanca. So, Blanca did win. I've got lots of Spanish friends. Lots of people on Instagram have messaged me saying, regardless of the fact that Blanca winning, they're more than happy to... They're proud that she's going to Eurovision. They don't really care if she gets zero points. So, Blanca won. Initial thoughts before we watch it again. Um, Be careful what you say. I think... The costumes and the whole staging was excellent. Mm -hmm. And I think she has an amazing voice. Mm -hmm. But I think there were a couple of songs that were catchier. Do you remember it? Uh, kind of, but then there's the other two songs that I had before her. I could still kind of sing the melody to them now. Okay. But to Blancas, I can't. Thoughts? Uh, Bearing in mind, I've actually scared them. <laughs> I've said that in regards to some some small circles of Spanish Eurovision fans, they can go hard. Yeah, I mean, I, Blanca is obviously an excellent singer. You know, she's obviously very talented. As you said to Noel, I can't really remember the song now. Haven't heard it there a while ago. So um, it's obviously, look, it's a, she's an excellent singer. Um, it was a good song, but seeing how it stacks up against Norway I'm, I'm not really sure to be honest exactly and I think that's the point in the sense of I don't think anyone's discrediting Blanca as an artist the vocals were insane the song there are moments in the song where like even I got chills even tonight it, it's, ama it's, it's amazing comparatively with the other songs that obviously were on offer she will do well she will do Spain so proud wave the flag <laughs> <laughs> she will do well like there's no doubt about that she will certainly be credited credited for artistry and there is something magical about that song yeah i think i would be surprised if it won <laughs> do you agree yeah i yeah I, I i can't see it winning to be honest but you never know you know okay. so we're gonna watch it again and who knows we might actually change our mind maybe maybe have you got your 
Spanish flags ready? Yeah. Okay. We're going to watch it again. So we all said at the beginning her vocals were amazing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, 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 there is something about this song, though. Yeah. I love the outfit. If that matters. It <laughs> does matter. I think the first half of the song is amazing. I generally yeah. do. It's impressive. The staging is impressive. It is quite good, though. See, I remember watching it start and here I was totally sold. And at some point I get off the train. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I kind of just want something more to happen. There's no rise and fall. There's no rise and fall. Mm. So wise now. Yeah. <laughs> you just come up with that. <laughs> it is cool though, it is very different. And different does do well at Eurovision, yeah. though. You can't fault her as yeah, a singer. Like She's given it absolutely everything. I don't know, now I'm watching it again. It's not that bad. Yeah, I like the end of it there again. So, have your thoughts changed? Yeah, I do like it a bit, a bit more now. I feel like if I listen to it... Like five more times. But at Eurovision, you don't have that luxury. No. I think like literally 95% of the audience on Eurovision night, it'll be the first time they've mm. heard that song. No, I think one thing that might might help it is it is very unique. There's nothing else like that that I heard tonight from Norway or Spain. Mm. So that could get it. But would you vote for it? No one knows your second name. <laughs> um, I'd vote for Norway first, put it okay. that way. Yeah. So, um, thoughts? Has your opinion changed? Um, slightly, yeah. For the better? Yeah, for the better, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, I, I enjoyed it more that time, but then, as you said, you don't have the luxury of listen, multiple listens um, when people are making a decision on Eurovision. So, I don't know. I'd probably still go for Norway over that one this is the thing about this song in the sense of I'm so glad Spain's picked it I'm so glad that she evidently won the televote as well I'm pretty sure she won the televote was that right do you yes, remember she did. Yeah. okay so this is the song that Spain wants and so as a result of that this is their choice and that's amazing and like I said from what I'm gauging from people reaching out on Instagram people actually want this to go regardless of the result and that's fantastic it's the song yeah. that Spain's chose yeah and it's really cool and she's cool with the song. It's cool. Yeah, I was going to say, get those Spanish flags. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've had a, actually a very, very good evening tonight. MGP embedded on Fest. We've had a nice little party. We've enjoyed it. Yeah, lots yeah. of fun. Nice yeah, fun. yeah, yeah. So thank you very much, Spain, for a fantastic evening here in Milan in Italy with two Irish people and a British guy and other people that have decided to go. <laughs> but yeah, if you're still here and you haven't subscribed, please do uh, click the notification button so you're informed if and when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.